Hello, welcome to Riff Force Studios. It's Tom here today. I'm going to take you through how I approach chipping on my death car vehicles. Here you can see I've kept my Scorpius in sub assemblies. I've taken liberty of applying the rust layer already, just basic browns, reddish browns, and then glossed it in preparation for the next stage. In this example, I'll be using Warn Effects by AK Interactive and Heavy Chipping Fluid by Mink by AK, starting with the Heavy Chipping Fluid in random patches. With the Heavy Chipping Fluid loaded into the airbrush, I apply this in places that would receive heavy chipping in real life as best as I can. Now it can't be easily seen in the angle that I've got this and the way that my light setup is but further in this clip you should see I'm aiming it at where the front of the tracks are top of the hatches and top of the tank itself really keep it as random as possible in preparation for the next stage Now that the heavy chipping patches have dried, the airbrush is going to get loaded up with the worn effects this time. Now normally, or previous tanks that I've done, I just apply the worn effects because I found the heavy chipping to be too volatile, is the word I can describe it, when you'll see later on in, in the video. I thought I'd experiment a bit and do the random patches of the heavy chipping fluid and then do it all over as you can see now with the worn effects and this is not teaching you to suck eggs but literally just whack it all over try not to let it pull too much it does float through the airbrush nicely you don't need to add any any thinner to it and just apply it in one one coat and leave it to dry with the chipping fluids applied it's now to add some colour to the tanks. Now I black everything back first, yeah, purely because how I rely on the thin layers of the Death Guard main colour white later on in the video that you'll see working up from a pre-shade. So I use a Game Air Black, thinned, I have to add not with water but with Tamiya X20A thinner I think it's called, should have written that down before I started the voiceover. But all the peas and all that preparation and this is just liberally applied all over the model just to take the brown away to work for later in the painting stages everyone's now all blacked out it's time to add some pre-shade I use Della and Rani white ink thinned six to one with Tamiya thinner again now I don't appreciate in the sense of some extremely talented painters I just focus on all the flat areas missing the recesses just to help accentuate the the death god white later in the video Before adding the Death Guard white, I'm going to put some green stripes on the tank and green out the Scorpius launchers themselves. This is first done with Castellan green thinned 1 to 1, this time instead of 6 to 1, with the Tamiya thinner. I generally do about 3 coats to build up the opacity. It doesn't go too greatly through the airbrush, I find. Um, there are a lot of cuts and edits in this just to where I was having a bit of a mare with the airbrush and especially with the, the Vallejo white layer in the video um, I took the liberty of masking it off camera purely because you don't want to see that and I used big areas, I used cling film or plastic wrap I think our cousins across the pond call it and a masking tape for the lines and now it's just a 50-50 mix of Elysian green mixed with that original Castellan green now I just try to apply this to the center of the panels of the Scorpius doors in the best way I can and 
and the very top of where you see the where the side turns into the top of the tank. My best way of describing that. This again is done in roughly about three coats to, so that this it actually becomes visible. It's a very subtle highlight and it's probably not the most my most consistent effort across my whole army. There's units that have got better highlights than others, but generally it comes down to how much time I have to airbrush. Now here comes some peeling action. I wasn't really too fussed in nice crisp lines here, as I was going to then invert the tape. So there's tape over the green parts and then apply the main death guard colour. So with a bit of bleed it's, it's nothing too much to worry about. Just thought it would be nice for you to catch that on the video. The next stage is to apply Vallejo Model Air Age White all over the model. I've thinned this one to one with the Tamiya thinner again. And I'll keep it in such thin coats as to build up the opacity as usual and try and retain the shadows as best to my ability. As you might be able to tell, I've already taken a little bit of applying the masking tape as I've mentioned in previous. And it's a little bit brighter around that to try and eliminate some of the green bleed that was there past the tape lines. Try to reduce the risk of um, shadow, unless unwanted shadows because I'm applying such thin layers. It's something that can occur and has occurred to me previously on other units. And after a bit of airbrush drama, this is the main death guard colour after three coats. With the main colours down, it's now time for a bit of peeling action. Now across the top, you will notice there's been some slight bleed where the tape hasn't stuck down to the hole quite as well. But where we are doing using the chipping fluid, it really doesn't matter. We can just blend it in and my overall tank technique and death guard technique, I can make it work. Uh, so a little bit of lazy taping off can be saved by a lot of weathering I find. And it's probably my ethos for army painting, but oh well, that's how I do it. Bit of a confession time. I seem to have either not pressed record or lost the, the footage of the main hole chipping. But anyway, I managed to catch this part. Now all you do to activate the chipping fluid is just water and slightly agitate the area. I used a old Citadel dry brush, as can be seen, it's quite worn and used. Um, as I mentioned previously in the video, the heavy chipping fluid you have to be careful with, it's very volatile and just approach it slowly. Um, the more water you add, the more layers of paint will come off. I've edited it about, and this is after a bit of time. And that chunk there by the sense of array, that wasn't intentional, but you just work with it. You can add more bits later on. The green doesn't show too well with the browns, but I've done it anyway, just to maintain consistency with my army. I've done it previously on the other green areas. Um, so I had to do it just for not OCD, just to make sure nothing looked too drastically different, should we say. Um, and that's it really, it's just a case of making the area wet, work at it with a brush, let it dry off. If you want to keep going back at it, you can. And here's the final result. Overall quite happy with it. There are a couple of areas you can see that the chunks of paint that came away are a lot bigger than I intended. Um, but. It adds to the overall effect of a Death Guard tank that's seen some war zones. And as you, as you know, us Death Guard don't keep things clean. We got to keep our scars and battle honours in place. Um, there's not much else to add really. It's a, a process that has a lot of steps involved and I've probably massively complicated it. But I had to add the black because the white over brown wasn't how I painted the infantry. Um, 
I'm not sure I will be continuing mixing the two chipping fluids. I just think I'll stick back to the, the worn effects one. I find the heavy chipping fluid too volatile for my taste, and you can still achieve some great effects with the, the slightly weaker one. Um, and you don't have to worry about massive chunks peeling away. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if there's any, any, any feedback, really appreciate it, or any tips. But if there's any questions, feel free to ask them below. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.